from Pretty Woman to My Best Friend's Wedding and so much more, Julia Roberts has given us so many reasons to smile. <laughs> Welcome to Entertainment Tonight. Oh, and Julia's cheesing extra hard today because she and hubby Danny Motor are celebrating their 21st wedding anniversary. So light the fireworks for ET Vault Unlocked, celebrating the wife, the mother, the Oscar winner, and America's forever sweetheart. Entertainment Weekly has said that you're the biggest star in America. I've got moves you've never seen. I'm completely grateful. I've had the most um, incredible opportunities, but at the same time, I mean, I still go about the things that I do the same way I always have for the same reason. Well done! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Does the crown weigh heavily to be America's sweetheart? Um, I'm not sure that I am, so I don't know. Well, a lot of people are calling you that, so whether you like it or not, I think you're stuck with it. Well, I've been called worse things. <laughs> Armed with a killer smile and undeniable talent, Julia quickly became Hollywood's it girl. Oh! <laughs> and the response I get from people is very kind. In the 90s, she captured hearts with classic rom-coms like Pretty Woman, My Best Friend's Wedding, and Notting Hill. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy, asking him to love her. You're living the life everyone else wants. Everything absolutely is A number one fabulous. For over three decades, she's been a leading lady. You're a classic. I'm a classic. And to this day, she's still one of the most likable celebs with an A-list roster of friends. We're talking Meryl Streep, Tom Hanks, and George Clooney. We don't like to brag. No, we don't. Secrets out. When was the moment that you felt like, I've made it, I've got this, like this is, I feel like this is the career? Um, probably uh, sometime between Aaron Brockovich and Ocean's Eleven. Really? Yeah, where you go, all right, this is, this is ingrained, this will not end, <laughs> yeah. With nearly 70 acting credits to her name, the 55-year-old's films have earned more than $4 billion at the global box office, making this pretty woman pretty rich as one of the highest paid stars in Hollywood. I know you just signed another um, multi-bazillion dollar contract. Yes, a bazillion dollars. Yeah. I can't believe my good fortune of, of work opportunities. I think that's what I focus on more than anything else. And plus, after taxes, you know, <laughs> hey. <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> we'll be holding a telethon for Julia. <laughs> In 2000, her role in Aaron Brockovich made her the first actress ever to earn $20 million for a single film. I don't need pity, I need a paycheck. Julia's our girl, she's good friends of ours and, and you know, we're here to support her. Denzel Washington, Brad Pitt and Jen Aniston all came out to the big premiere. The role earned Julia a Golden Globe, SAG Award and Oscar Gold. <laughs> I love it up here. So happy. Thank you. I mean, outside of adulation for what you do inside your house with your family, it's the highest honor that an actor can be paid to be recognized in this way. I just want to enjoy this moment. It may never come again, so it's to be really reveled in and appreciated and, um, you know, yeah, cartwheels yeah. squealing like a little piglet. The mom of three also reportedly banked three million plus a percentage of the box office for both Mother's Day and Valentine's Day, small roles that only required a handful of days on set. You look very pretty. <clears throat> Thank you. The most powerful person in Hollywood. How does that feel? Um, hilarious in a word. I think number of teeth is part of the tabulations or something. <laughs> And here's a fun fact, Julia's first brush with fame happened the day she was born. Start with the day you were born. Who paid for the hospital bill? Uh, the King family paid. Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta. And how did that come about? Obviously because my parents couldn't pay for the hospital bill. Yes, the King stepped in. Julia revealed her connection to the civil rights leaders last year during a History Channel sit down with Gail King. My parents had a theater school in Atlanta called the Actors and Writers Workshop. And one day, Coretta Scott King called my mother and asked if her, her kids could be part of the school because they were ha having a hard time finding um, a place that would accept her kids. And my mom was like, sure, come on over. And so they just all became friends and they helped us out of a jam. 
Julia always seemed to know she was destined for big things. She left her hometown just three days after her high school graduation. I am just a girl from Smyrna, Georgia, who wanted to, um, you know, be in movies and get a certain amount of attention. I mean, I wasn't wallflower scum, but I wasn't, you know, popular. I wasn't a cheerleader and I wasn't considered, you know. Did you want to be? The girl in demand. Who didn't want to be popular in high school? When I first moved to New York City, when I was 17 and I got there and there were so many people, it was all so fast. And my sister who I was living with was so busy with school and her friends. And so I, just going to the ATM, I had to really like muster up the courage to get across all those avenues to get my $20 bill and then run back to the apartment. And um, at one point I called her and said, you know, I don't think this place is for me. I'm, I think I'm gonna come on back home. And she said, mm, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. And thank goodness. My first job was on Crime Story. And just because I say this doesn't mean you guys have to go digging for oh, clips. I just don't like him. Mom, I don't like you being out half the night. And then about a year or so later, I did the, um, I believe it was the last episode of Miami Vice, which, you know, I just, I could not have been worse. You always this efficient. Not always. Sometimes I come all undone. I noticed. In 1986, Julia co-starred with her big brother Eric in the Western film Blood Red. E.T. was on set. It's my uh, sister Julia's first film, and uh, we're having a great time. She uh, plays you, my sister, in the film. Marco? There was no reason for it to um, all happen for me, except for that I really wanted a chance to prove myself. And that's really what it comes down to, is, is getting a chance um, without that you can never really, you could be wonderful at what you do, but if someone doesn't give you the chance to prove it, then, then you know, you're just stuck. So I just wanted to go and, and see what I could see and prove what I could prove. Julia's first critical success opened just a year after her acting debut. I'm gonna be slinging pizza for the rest of my life. I turned 20 on that movie. Maybe I turned 21 wow. on that movie. Pretty I think of that movie so fondly. The coming-of-age rom-com Mystic Pizza debuted in 1988, the same year Julia first sat down with E.T. Tell me about Daisy. She's just very vivacious and um, very high-spirited, spunky, wild. Ah! My car! How did you get the role? Well, I, I just, I, I, put black mousse on my hair because they told me I, I looked too, you know, blonde. Did you like it? <laughs> I did like it. I grew, I grew to love it, actually. Are you surprised by the popularity of the film itself? Um, I have to say I am. Yes, I am surprised. What do you think this is, is going to do for your career? I'm just the same yeah. as I was before I made Mystic Pizza. Whatever happens, happens. And what happened next? Back-to-back -back Oscar nominations. What a rush! <laughs> That's a good word for it, yeah. The first came after her appearance in the all-star ensemble for Steel Magnolias. Prince Charles and Diana were royal fans. What's the film about? A mother and daughter and kind of their ability and inability to face the realities of their lives, which is that its daughter is very sick and will always be sick. Open your eyes, Shelby. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Look at it. Um, who's in it? You got a minute? Sally Field, Olympia Dukakis, Shirley MacLaine, Daryl Hannah, Dolly Parton. Is there any way you can put into words what you learned watching that group in action? Well, um, I learned that you can't really wholly respect an actor until you've worked with them, <coughs> until you stood toe to toe and said, I don't know what I'm doing, and they helped you until, um, until they become your friend, until you cry with them and laugh with them. I respect these five women more than any other actors I know. I felt um, especially close to Sally because she played my mama. Shelby, you need some juice. You need some juice. Stop it, mama. There are times when if she weren't there, I wouldn't have known what to do. She always knew what to say. The moment she walked on the set for the, the first rehearsal, I called my agent and said, I think you should handle her. This girl's going to be a star. And we hadn't even done one. Uh, scene. Julia has become 
just, she just skyrocketed <laughs> off. We're all so proud of her. Mm. What a beautiful woman, huh? Oh, lucky, well, huh? it's true. Julia followed that up with Pretty Woman, which is still one of the top five highest earning rom coms of all time. E.T. was on set in 1989. You're obviously in the wrong place. Please leave. I have attempted to go shopping earlier and was not very successful in getting the women in the store to be very receptive to me. And I am directed here by a man who works at the hotel and now she's going to, uh, she's going to help me, help me find something to wear to dinner. You're late. You're stunning. Working with Richard here. It's great. He's, he's really supportive. Uh, giving actor. If I'm lost, he would kind of help me find a way to get around where I had to go. It's, he makes it a very easy working atmosphere. Besides being beautiful, she's very talented and, and um, great to work with. I'm totally up. I don't know where the <laughs> we are. <laughs> this is bad. Big mistake. Big. Huge. Vivian's a really big, vast character. You know, she has a lot of physical movement and a lot of, you know, quick dialogue and she's very sharp. Holy <laughs> Any research that you did on playing this particular part? I talked to a lot of girls. It was fascinating actually to hear their stories and to see the way they looked and the way they dressed. It wasn't like you kind of imagined. They looked like just a girl that you would know from school or something. And they all had really great kind of images of the future, of things they wanted to do and um, they were all rather positive. It was probably one of the more extraordinary times of my life just making that movie. Have there ever been a night like this before in your career? No, not like this. And the winner is Julia Roberts, a pretty woman. You've become an awfully big movie star in the last few years. Do you ever think of, reflect on that? It assures me that I may be doing the right thing. I still have, I have a lot to do. Okay, so how do you follow up a blockbuster like Pretty Woman? Well, Julia played a super smart waiting game. But I think the biggest uh, risk that I've taken in my career as an entirety was when I stopped working shortly after the success of Pretty Woman. I just wasn't really getting any scripts that I felt I wanted to align myself with. And so it wasn't until the Pelican Brief, and it was almost two years that it didn't work. Everyone I've told about the brief is dead. It paid off in the Pelican Brief. Julia played a law student who uncovers an assassination plot. Her love interest, Denzel Washington. A little known secret about that scene, the two-time Oscar winner actually declined to kiss Julia in the movie because he feared upsetting his fan base of black women. That was Denzel's decision, for the record. Um, because of his character, which made perfect sense character-wise. But for me, I was kind of like, wow, bummer. <laughs> you know, and I still have people come up to me and say, why didn't you kiss Denzel in Pelican Brief? And I'm like, oh my god. I would like to get back with Denzel. In what kind of role? I don't know, something ferocious. Pelican Brief was the connection for you guys, and now she's grown so much over the years as well. Do you tell her how proud you are? Absolutely. Well, last time we talked, we were on a tennis court, and she was beating me, so I was, I was, tell, I was telling her other things that day. And there was no denying the chemistry when Julia teamed up with another leading man, Hugh Grant. Thanks. Pleasure. It was for another movie we loved, the 1999 rom-com Notting Hill. You'll be my date to my little sister's birthday party if it's all right. The film has you playing a Hollywood superstar, mm -hmm. big movie star. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I mean, it's a bit tricky uh, because you don't want to do a caricature. And what's nice about this is this story is trying to show her as a real person as well as this sort of public figure. Next came mini skirts and padded bras, bringing to life the true story of environmental activist Aaron Brockovich. I've got $74 in the bank. I can't afford to settle down. It's compelling material because you have a person who is the most unsuspecting of heroines, uh, who also happens to be really just fabulous and kind of bigger than life and vivacious and incredible and talks like a sailor and like all these great 
things to play. Your assessment of Julia Roberts portraying you? She's phenomenal. Yeah? She's absolutely awesome. The more I see the movie and watch it, the more I think, okay, yeah, well, those, yeah, that's great. Julia Roberts. The role won her an Oscar. This movie was sinfully fun to make. <laughs> I love it up here. It's not since Aaron Brockovich, really, that I was in a movie shooting every day. Yeah, and really almost every scene in this film. Yeah. Julia was all in for 2010's Eat, Pray, Love, playing a woman on a journey of self-discovery and self-acceptance. I'm so tired of counting every calorie I consume so I know exactly how much self-loathing to take into the shower. I'm just through with the guilt. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish this pizza and buy ourselves some bigger jeans. Did you put on any weight over there? I did, I did. I, did. I mean, it became inevitable. Yeah. It was like Olympic carbo loading. When in Rome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, and if we're picking favorite Julia projects, this was magic. Answer his prayer now, baby. Answer my prayer, baby. Answer his prayer. So you let me do. It's such a fun movie. 1997's My Best Friend's Wedding, which co-starred Dermot Mulroney and Cameron Diaz. I'm so <laughs> manipulative. I'm so horrible. It's like I'm spinning this web. And, and you know, Cameron is just like, oh, you know, doing right. the thing. And I think, how can I just ruin this poor girl's life? Is this a uh, comfortable kind of role for you? Well, I think Same everybody thing. loves to see these kinds of roles because we all like to go to a movie and just be hopefully completely entertained. Nearly 25 years later, Julia told us the film still brings the feels. I mean, Dermot and I, anytime it's like on TV or the song that plays from when we're on the, the ferry boat together. And the way you We always are calling each other. I think we were just lucky. The alchemy of our relationships really, I think, is what stands the test of time in that movie.